Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to welcome you to the Technion's Honorary Doctorate Ceremony for 2017. I am Professor Wayne Kaplan. I'm the Executive Vice President for Research of the Technion, and I'm honored to be your Master of Cere Ceremonies for this evening. The Technion is pleased to confer its honorary de doctorate degree upon distinguished individuals whose contributions to society and to the sciences have been truly exemplary. Tonight, we recognize eight such outstanding individuals. Now that you've sat down, if you would please rise to receive the academic procession. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> members of the Board of Governors, fellow members of Technion Management, faculty, students, alumni, distinguished recipients of the honorary doctorates and their guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2017 Technion Honorary Doctorate Ceremony. I would like to open this festive ceremony with music. I'm delighted to invite our performers for this evening, a string duo, Olga Moitlis and Tom Palni. Olga, yes? A few words about our performers. Olga Moitlis on the harp was born in Moscow, where she received her musical education since early childhood from the Gnesin Special Music School and the Gnesin Music Academy. After immigrating to Israel in 1990, she continued her postgraduate studies, studies in the Tel Aviv Music Academy. Olga has a master's degree in harp and musicology, as well as an artist diploma in harp. She currently performs as a soloist, plays in various chamber ensembles, and performs with choirs and orchestras throughout Israel. In addition to teaching harp, Olga also teaches theoretical music so subjects, and her students represent the young musical generation in Israel and around the world. Tom Polny, on the violin, earned his first bachelor's degree in viola from the Manhattan School of Music. Tom played in the Philadelphia Orchestra, the Metropolitan Orchestra, and has taught chamber music in the pre-college division of the Juilliard School of Art. After years as a professional musician, he decided to come back to Israel and to study computer science in the Technion, of course. As our student, he plays in many ceremonies, and we are blessed to have him here with us this evening. The first piece performed by Olga and Tom is Salut des Amants, Opus 12 by Edward Elgar, written originally for violin and piano.
Thank you, Olga and Tom. Now I'd like to invite Professor Peretz Levy, President of the Technion, to offer his greetings. Thank you, Wayne. Distinguished recipients of the honorary doctorates and their guests, faculty of the Technion, deans, members of the Board of Governors, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen. What will be the world be like once we live in smart homes, are taken to our destinations by smart cars, and our smart appliances regularly conduct conversations among themselves to manage our daily life. As we learned from Yoram Yaakobi this morning, it certainly seems like we will soon find out. Our theme this year, Technion of Things, hints at this new age in which we are living. In a survey of economists and managers of leading companies at the Economic Forum in Davos in 2016, there was a widespread agreement that in the year 2025, 10% of the population will be wearing internet-connected clothes, 50% of the internet traffic will be to homes and home appliances, the first robot will function as a fully-fledged pharmacist, the first car will be emerged from a 3D printing assembly line, as will 5% of consumer products. In 2025, 90% of the population will have permanent access to the internet, and 10% of the cars in the US will be autonomous, not requiring human drivers. These innovative technologies will revolutionize the way we live, work, and relate to one another. It will impact many industries and professions and dramatically change the economic models upon which many countries currently operate. Autonomous systems based on artificial intelligence will replace people in many fields. The fourth industrial revolution is different from its predecessors in speed and scope. This frantic pace is unprecedented. Who would believe, even 10 short years ago, that today, each of us would carry around in our pockets a phone so smart it would enable us to access Encyclopedia Britannica in its entirety, order a cab and converse with a friend on the other side of the world with identical ease. It is to do, it is to this rapidly evolving reality that educational system, especially higher education, must adapt in terms of teaching and research. What must we do to ensure that the graduates of higher education who join the workforce of the second and third decades of the 21st century are appropriately equipped with what they need? First, we must try our best to understand the professions of tomorrow and provide appropriate skills accordingly. Second, adopt innovative learning methodologies suited to this new world. We are already seeing the massive open online courses, we call them the MOOCs, the flipped class models, and problem-based learning. Third, invest in developing and encouraging continuing education. The initial knowledge obtained during training quickly becomes obsolete. Fourth, tighten academia, industry, state, dialogue, to ensure greater connectivity and responsiveness to meet the actual emerging needs in society. Fifth, research will become ever more interdisciplinary, and this too must be planned for and taken into account. And finally, for society to promote creativity, equality, and joy in this digital age, there is a pressing need for developing new conceptual frameworks and means of expression by researchers in the social sciences, humanities, and the arts. All these aspects and others must be tackled by academic institutions and society at large. Tonight, we are honoring eight special people who come from diverse backgrounds and fields. They have all made contributions so significant that they have not only helped bring us to where we are today, they will continue to have significant impact well into the future. We are delighted to recognize them today. 
פרופסור אודיל אייזנשטיין, of the French National Center for Scientific Research, a towering figure in modern chemistry and one of the most influential chemists worldwide, a research in the fields of catalysis, organometallic and organic synthesis is groundbreaking, impacting applications for real life problems. Professor David Donohoe of Stanford University is a world leader in the field of modern mathematics, information theory, and statistics. His fundamental research breakthroughs in theoretical and computational statistics have influenced numerous applications in disciplines ranging from medical imaging to finance. David has also a special connection to the Technion. David is married to Miriam, whose father was a student in the first class of 1924. Listen to that. Her father, who was a student of architecture, designed the logo of the Technion. <laughs> Professor Raphael Reif, the 17th president of Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, a university that leads the world in both fundamental science and the encouragement of innovation and entrepreneurship. Professor Reif, a close friend of the Technion, is a leader in the development of MIT's online learning platforms that are an educational triumph. Dr. Yosef Chekhanover, Yossi, is an esteemed Israeli diplomat and entrepreneur who paved the way to peace and safeguard Israel's defense through skillful talks with its allies and enemies. Although not a Technion graduate, Yossi is a member of the Technion family, and even as a part in the first Nobel Prizes award to the Technion in 2004, as you will soon hear. Mr. Joseph Neubauer is a self-made business success story. His generosity and philosophy of helping people to help themselves is legendary. Joe and his wife, Janet Lerman Neubauer, are the Technion guardians supporting projects at Technion to encourage student exchange in faculty and PhD recruitment, particularly the recruitment of Arab faculty members and doctoral fellowship fund for Arab students. Mr. Martin Paul Moshal is an exceptional philanthropist, internet entrepreneur, venture capitalist, and inventor who has said education is the most important route out of poverty. Two of his most ambitious recent endeavors include encouraging economic advancement in Israel's periphery by investing in the Barlev high-tech park in Western Galilee and establishing the Moshal Scholarship Program, realizing the potential of students in Israel, South Africa, and the Ukraine. Professor Bernard Amadei is a professor of civil engineering at the University of Colorado at Boulder a world expert in geomechanics. He is a founding president of Engineers Without Borders, USA, and played a major role in establishing the first Israeli branch at Technion in the Faculty of Civil and Environmental Engineering. His vision of engineering as compassion in action and a vehicle for peace has transformed the field of engineering. Mr. Emmanuel Tzvi Liban, a Technion alumnus, in mechanical engineering, who is considered to be the father of all Israeli jet engines. Emmanuel worked at the Israeli aerospace industries, at IAI, for 30 years in numerous capacities, for research and development engineer, to vice president for engineering and business development of its aviation division. Most importantly, his eldest granddaughter is about to graduate from the Technion. Continuing the family tradition, she is on the president's honor list. Tonight, the Technion is very proud to confirm its highest distinction about this group of outstanding individuals whose life's work and achievement demonstrate that leadership can come in many forms and many fields, science, education, business, diplomacy, philanthropy, and community. Thank you for all you have devotedly accomplished and for the shining example you set for us and for future generations to come. With leaders like yourself, the fourth industrial revolution is being welcomed in the most fruitious way. Congratulations, Mazel Tov, 
and have a beautiful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Levy. I now invite Mr. Lawrence Jaquil, Chairman of our Board of Governors, to deliver his greetings. My President, distinguished honorees, members of the Technion Board of Governors, ladies and gentlemen, it is always a pleasure to welcome you to the honorary doctorate ceremony. While it is an evening when we give due honor to those on the stage, it is also an opportunity to take stock of all of which we can be proud as members of the Technion family. This year's branding of our board meeting is TOT, Technion of Things, based upon the web of things. But in addition, with the energy that's in this auditorium, we could be called the High Energy Technion University. All of us here are part of that branding, adding to it the human dimension that is so important. Whether we be faculty, students, staff, members of the board, guests or honorees, we create a synergy which in all its power places the Technion on the world stage. In October 2015, the Internet Society published a 50-page white paper providing an overview of the web of things, exploring re related issues and various challenges. I am certain that if the Technion were to commission such a white paper on TOT, the Technion of Things, it would be far longer than 50 pages. And I am convinced there would not be many places on earth that would not figure in those Technion pages, even those places where, for reasons better known to others, we are not even welcomed. We reach out to those places who do not want us. We do so with a hand of friendship, with a desire to cooperate on matters of mutual concern through a platform of medicine, science, and technology. It is hopefully possible to bridge the abyss that may exist in those arenas. And sometimes we get a result we don't expect. Yesterday, an unidentified member of the Palestinian Authority made a significant gift to Rambam Hospital in thanks for the outstanding treatment he received by our Technion physicians. The Technion reaches out because unlike many others, we do not look upon limits as challenges, but rather as reasons to find solutions. At the Technion, people turn ideas into reality. Those ideas transform into medicine that cures, equipment that produces and protects, systems that communicate, logarithms that predict, theories that undo previous thoughts, and innovations that move us forward in a never-ending web, interlinking and extending beyond limits. This campus in which we meet is a powerhouse of things. It makes an impact well beyond its size, because here at the Technion, we know how wonderful it is not to wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Our faculty, our staff, and our students for whom this institute exists deserve our continued support and unqualified appreciation. Now behind all this, there is clearly a need for leadership. Leadership that thinks out of the box, leadership that knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. I am grateful that at the honorary doctorate ceremony, I get to speak second. Because that way, I can talk about our president, my friend, Peretz Lavi. I would suggest a friend of everyone. It gives me an opportunity to thank him 
for his words and his works and to express appreciation to him. As you know, Peretz has been the president of the Technion for eight years and at the closing plenary of the board, we will all be asked to ratify a further term of two years. Peretz. Now I know that Peretz would not wish me to suggest that all that has been achieved at the Technion during his term as president is just because of his leadership. He would say, I just happened to be president in the right place at the right time. That may be true, but it takes a special style of leadership to know the right place at the right time and to turn opportunities into reality. Parents, you are one of those leaders who thinks outside the box, who knows the way, who goes the way, and who shows the way. Thank you. <laughs> On this stage tonight, we have another group of leaders, those we are about to confer with the title Honorary Doctor of the Technion. They come from all walks of life, all careers, and are honored tonight for all reasons. But the one reason that applies to all of them is that, as Parrott said earlier, they are all members of the Technion family. There is a very interesting adage couched by none other than Calvin Coolidge, the 30th President of the United States a name that has probably never been uttered from this dais before. His adage says, no person was ever honored for what he received. Honor has been the reward for what they gave. Alongside that, we have a saying from the Talmud, lo mekomo shel adam, michvado ala adam, michabed et mekomo. It is not the place that honors the person, but the person that honors the place. The juxtaposition of these two sayings expresses the essence of our conferment upon each of you. The title then in Hebrew is called Dr. L'Shem Kavod, Doctor in the Name of Honor. You have given of yourselves and we honor you. You give honor to the place that bestows it upon you. You have our deepest congratulations. There is no better way to end my remarks than to look to the future. The Technion has always done so. It is because of that that it has been so successful. It has gained supporters, achieved accolades in an unbelievably short history beyond anything that could have been imagined. And it has given to the world well in excess of its size and through doing so has gained so much more. The Technion, as we know, is part of a small country, the state of Israel, which also looks to the future, also has been successful, also has gained supporters, achieved accolades, and given to the world well in excess of its small size. Both Israel and through it the Technion look to the future with a positive perspective. May it bring more success, more achievements, greater accolades, and continue to give to the world, and may both Israel and the Technion grow even stronger roots and forever look forward to a bright and peaceful future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jakir. This brings us to the next musical interlude. This time the duo will play Liebeslade by Fritz Kreisler. Olga and Tom, stage is yours.
Thank you very, very much. To begin the conferment of the honorary doctorate degrees, I call upon Mr. Guidon Frank, Chairman of the Council, to read the formal proclamation of the honorary doctorate recipients. The Technion Mahon Technology Israel, the Curatorion of the Technion Mahon Technology Israel, the Tokif Samfoyotav and Monakotlo, the Yede Hokata Mossad, and the Temlach Latata Vadam Nail Biom Kavav Betevet, Shnat Hamesh Salafim Shvamo Shivim Vesheva, Shuayoma Srim Rabba Bodesh Yanuar, Alpine Vesvaisre, Valdata Senat, Manik Bazot. לפרופסור ברנרד עמדי, דוקטור יוסף צ'חנובר, פרופסור דוד דונהו, פרופסור אודיל אייזנשטיין, עמנואל צבי ליבן, מרטין פול מושל, ג'וזף נויבאואר ולפרופסור רפאל רייף. את התואר, דוקטור לשם כבוד. ניתן בחיפה, מי"ח בסיוון שנת 5777 שהוא היום ה-12 בחודש יוני שנת 2017 בשנה ה-70 למדינת ישראל. על החתום, פרופסור פרץ לוי, נשיא הטכניון, לורן ג'קיר, יושב ראש הקורטוריון, גדעון פרנק, יושב ראש הוועד המנהל. טכניון, Israel Institute of Technology. The Board of the Governors of the Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, by virtue of the authority granted to it by the Constitution of the Institute, in accordance with the decision made by the Council on the 26th day of Tevet, 5,777, the 24th day of January, 2017, and with the approval of the Senate, hereby confers upon Professor Bernardi Amadei Dr. Joseph Chekhanover, Professor David Donahoe, Professor Odil Eisenstein, Emanuel Tzvi Liban, Martin Paul Moshal, Joseph Neubauer, and Professor Raphael Reif, the degree of Dr. Honoris Causa, given in Haifa on the 80th day of Sivan, 5777, the 12th day of June, 2017, in the 70th year of independence of the State of Israel. Signed by Peres Lavi, President, Lauren Jacquier, Chairman of the Board, Gideon Frank, Chairman of the Council. Thank you very much. We should now begin with the conferment of the honorary doctorate, and I am pleased to start with distinguished Professor Bernard Amade. As a distinguished professor of civil engineering, Bernard Amade has always put the good of humanity first. He is co-founder of Engineers Without Borders International, an organization dedicated to fostering sustainable energy projects in developing communities. In 2001, he became the founding president of the USA chapter. Today, there are 450 chapters worldwide, including one at Technion and three others in Israel. Bernard holds the University of Colorado at Boulder Mortensen Endowed Chair in Global Engineering, his numerous awards and honors received in the field of geomechanics attest to his brilliant career in academia. He is an elected member of the U.S. National Academy of Engineering and the National Academy of Construction. In 2013 and 2014, he was the U.S. Science Envoy to Pakistan and Nepal. He is also a board member of the U.S. State Department Peace Tech Labs. Bernard has dedicated his life to making a difference in the world by instilling compassion and a social conscience in engineering in his students. He is a true friend of Israel and Technion, where he molded the Center for Global Engineering and pioneered the course in engineering for developing communities. My philosophy for educating engineers for today's world and for the 21st century in general is to introduce them to some global issues. 
What I expect engineers to have in terms of skills and knowledge is to be able to integrate various disciplines, not just engineering disciplines, but non-technical issues as well, in, in their design. I visited the village of San Pablo, uh, Belize in uh, 2000, 2001. And when I visited the village, I met some young girls whose job was to carry the water from the river to the village. And they told me that the girls could not go to school. So they asked me if I could help. And that uh, for me was a, an eye-opening type of event. And um, decided that doing engineering for the three to four billion people whose job is to stay alive by the end of the day was more important than doing engineering for the other one to two billion people. So it was really a, a midlife, not crisis, but a midlife awakening in my engineering career, in my professional career. What I found when I studied Engineers Without Borders is that the students were extremely excited about the idea of being able to go to the field to learn engineering by doing. Not only are they are learning about engineering together, but they are also exposed to each other's cultures. And that, to me, is the future of the planet, bringing people, making them realize that we are all part of one planet, and as engineers we can contribute to the well-being of seven, eight billion people on our planet. I'm greatly honored to receive the honorary degree from the Technion in Israel. This is a, a unique place that I have uh, visited and interacted with a lot over the past uh, 10 years or so. I remember first uh, coming to um, Israel in 2007 or 2008 and working with my colleague Mark Talesnik. And that was the beginning of a long collaboration. I obviously want to make sure that this degree is not just about me, it's about millions of volunteers who are part of Engineers Without Borders International. So I'm glad to share that doctorate degree with all those great people. Professor Amade, would you please rise, approach the presidium table, there's a spot right where you're standing that's marked. In recognition of your pioneering research in geotechnology and your unique contributions to engineering education, with appreciation for your impact on society through the establishment of Engineers Without Borders USA and co-founding Engineers Without Borders International, and in gratitude for your support of its implementation at the Technion, I now invite Professor Amade to approach Professor Levy and Professor Schwartz, who will present the scrolls. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Dr. Joseph Chekhanover is an esteemed Israeli diplomat and a successful entrepreneur. Throughout his distinguished diplomatic career, he paved the way to peace and safeguarded Israel's defense through skillful talks with its allies. Joseph was Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, participated in the peace treaty negotiations with Egypt, legal advisor to the Israeli Defense Establishment, and head of its mission to the United States and Canada. He received the U.S. Defense Department's Medal for Distinguished Public Service and is a two-time recipient of the French Legion of Honor. Following the untimely death of his parents, Joseph helped raise his young brother Aaron, a Technion professor and one of Israel's first Nobel laureates in science. In 2010, Joseph represented Israel on the UN Committee to investigate the Turkish flotilla and was appointed to negotiate with Turkey, resulting in reconciliation. Joseph is a long-standing member of Technion's International Board of Governors, on the boards of other Israeli universities and the Elie Wiesel Foundation. He has served on the boards of the Bank of Israel and numerous major Israeli and international companies. He is co-founder of the Challenge Fund, one of the first venture capital funds in Israel. I, from very early stage of my life, was involved in the Haganah. They were fighting in Haifa in 48, and we, the youngsters, 
were used as uh, moving messages between the different uh, fighting units. Growing up in Haifa at that time, of course, had an impact on the rest of my life. Most of my adult life, I was somehow involved either in defense or in foreign relations. We are only two brothers, and there is a difference of 14 years between the two of us. We lost our mother when my brother Aaron was seven, eight years old, and uh, we lost our father when he was 14 years old. And I became responsible for him, which I did with a lot of love and care. I have a very soft spot to the Technion, and that's why this honor means a lot to me. In the early 30s, my uncle, Svice Hanover was a teacher in the Technion, in the engineering school. Later, my brother, Aaron, whom I love so much, was a researcher and a teacher and professor of biochemistry in the Technion. That where he did, together with Professor Hershko, his work that entitled them the Nobel Prize. And on top of it, I believe that the Technion is the most important institute in Israel, which is a cradle for most of our engineers that are leading the Israeli technology, both in the civil area and the military area. I call upon Dr. Joseph Chekhanover to please rise, if you would stand in front of the flags, and I have the honor to invite your little brother, Aaron, to the podium to read your citations and to say a few war warm words. <clears throat> in recognition of your outstanding contribution to the international standing of the State of Israel, in appreciation for your relentless and multifaceted achievements as a jurist, economist, and statesman, and in gratitude for your long-standing support of Technion and its students as chair of the Dr. Yaakov Isler Foundation. Well, nowadays, uh, it's not clear what faculty members are supposed to say or not supposed to say out of the, what they are instructed to say. But I will nevertheless uh, take the liberty to say something that uh, is not going currently to violate any law or instruction or ethical code. And that's something very personal that was mentioned already in the little clip. Words cannot describe what my brother has really done to the state of Israel not because they are short, but because more than 90% of it is still under the water and will remain under the water for many decades to come. That's on the state side. But states are kind of undefined entities. I don't know whether a country can thank somebody, whether a country can have a heart, whether a country is in debt to somebody. We describe it in all kinds of metaphoric words, but nevertheless, we don't understand it. But relations between people can be described, and the debt that I owe to my brother can never be repaid. As it was said, I was lucky that we were born 14 years apart. Actually, I'm not sure that my parents meant to have me, but that's something that uh, I'm not sure can be proved or asked or inquired or investigated. But anyway, we lost our parents when I was a teenager, and my brother that was just married uh, decided to have an addition to his family, and that's me, and it was not easy. I was basically on the verge of youth delinquency, truly there, and uh, he took me in my hand 
and along quite a long way during high school made me eligible to apply to the only medical school in Israel at that time, Hadassah of the Hebrew University. I remember clearly like it was yesterday the entrance examination. We traveled together with a bus to Jerusalem. He accompanied to the medical school, waited outside until I finished the first exam. We went to the hotel the next day, the second exam. We waited a few weeks until the results were announced and then there was the interview. For the interview, he and his late uh, wife, Atara, took me to the store buying me shoes and pants that I would look like a human being. And again, went to the interview in Jerusalem. Step by step, hand by hand, accompanied by my late aunt here in Haifa, it was a combined effort, they brought me to the point where I am now. I have no doubt, it's very personal, that without him, I would not have stood here before you today, and this is a debt I will never be able to repay. Yossi, I'm proud of you. Thank you, Professor Chachanover. very much. Professor David Donahoe of Stanford University is a world leader in the fields of modern mathematics and statistics. His fundamental research breakthroughs have influenced numerous applications in disciplines ranging from medical imaging to finance. A giant in the field of information processing, David has spearheaded the world's effort to harness and handle large-scale information and to extract meaningful material from huge data. Beyond his research achievements, he is a legendary teacher and advisor, mentoring thousands of students. At Technion alone, David has profoundly influenced the works of prominent Israeli academics Mikhail Elad, Freddy Bruchstein, Yonina Eldar, and Moti Segev. David has received the most prestigious awards in mathematics and science, including the MacArthur Fellowship, the John von Neumann Prize, the Norbert Wiener Prize in Applied Mathematics, and in 2013, the Shaw Prize in Mathematics, also known as the Nobel Prize of the East. He holds 35 patents and has published more than 200 journal and conference publications. Statistics attracted me when I was in college because I saw even years ago that there were going to be massive data analysis challenges that would always need a lot of mathematical ability to solve. The excitement from seeing that computers were bringing a whole new world filled with data and data analysis got me on this track towards analyzing data and thinking about processing data. As a mentor, I like to try to understand what the person I'm working with is good at by redirecting their attention. Sometimes I manage to get them to be more productive and get them to be more effective in what they want to do. My wife is Israeli. We met as PhD students at Harvard. After a considerable amount of time just visiting Israel for family reasons, I've also visited on sabbatical, I've visited for conferences, I've visited for commercial purposes, and there have been numerous opportunities for me to interact with Israeli industry and Israeli academics. The Technion is a national treasure for Israel, and everyone who's involved in supporting the institution, helping build it up, being part of its proud tradition over more than 100 years can really be proud of what they've accomplished. I'm so happy to have a chance to visit the Technion, to interact with the faculty, to meet students. And on a very personal note, 
my father-in-law was a graduate of the Technion as my sister-in-law and I've always thought of the Technion as a very, very important place in our family. I draw your attention to the photograph on the screen, which was referred to by the president this morning. You're seeing the picture of Professor Dunho's father-in-law from the first graduating class of architecture. I believe this photograph is actually from 1927. Uh, and a wonderful connection to the tech. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Donahoe, would you please rise? In recognition of your significant contributions to modern mathematical statistics, in particular the field of optimal algorithms for statistical estimation in the presence of noise and efficient techniques for sparse representation and recovery in large data, data sets, and in gratitude for your friendship and cooperation with the Technion and its faculty. Would you please approach the Presidium, Professor Levy, Professor Schwartz, the scrolls please. Thank you very much. Please take your seats. Professor Odile Eisenstein is a towering figure in modern chemistry and one of the most influential chemists worldwide. Her research in the fields of catalysis, organometallic and organic synthesis is groundbreaking, impacting applications for real life problems. She is currently Emeritus Research Director of the National Center for Scientific Research in France and adjunct professor at the University of Oslo. Odile is a good friend of Technion, having spent a month as a visiting lecturer at the Schulich Faculty of Chemistry, where she collaborates with professors Yitzchak Apoloig and Ilan Marek. She strongly promotes Israeli scientists as a member of the Scientific Advisory Board of the World Association of Theoretical and Computational Chemists. Roald Hoffman, 1981 Nobel Laureate in Chemistry and Technion Honorary Doctor, describes Odile as a superb theoretician, whose work is the best interaction of theory and experiment that he's ever seen. Odile has been honored globally and is the first woman to be elected to the chemistry section of the French Academy of Sciences in 50 years. She is the second foreign citizen to receive the American Chemical Society's Organometallics Award. She was nominated to the French Legion of Honor and named Officier de l'Ordre du Mérite one of the highest distinctions of the French Republic. I am what is known a computational chemist. So a computational chemist doesn't do experiment. Computational chemist is going to try to model the reality. So what does that mean? He's going to try to represent what the experimental chemist does in his part. He does it in his computer. And he can do that in a computer because indeed he knows how to represent molecules with appropriate mathematics. So I do that in collaboration with my colleague, experimental chemist, and together we try to understand how molecules transform into each other. And it feels very good when you are able to propose an interpretation and even sometimes predict. The first time I visited Israel, I was a student. It was in 1974. And after that, I was invited other several times. So I developed friendship with people. I have uh, collaboration and I enjoy and I feel like in a family. Technion is very special. Technion is one of the absolutely best place of learning uh, of the world and receiving a honor of such a place feels really extremely good. You feel humble and extremely honored. 
Another reason is that one of the person who has received a similar honor is one of my mentors, Rolf Hoffman, Nobel Prize in 85. And just being in his step is something fantastic. So I'm very pleased to go back to Technion and meet my friends and colleagues there. Professor Odile Eisenstein, in tribute to your outstanding scientific achievements and your important fundamental contributions to the fields of organic, organometallic, catalytic, and computational chemistry, in recognition of your outstanding leadership in the international scientific community and in gratitude for your friendship and support of the scientific community in Israel and the Techion in particular, would you please approach the Presidium Professor Levy, Professor Schwartz, you have the honors. Thank you very much. Immanuel Tzvi Liban's life mirrors the history of the State of Israel, a story of survival and triumph. For more than 50 years, he has been one of the pioneers of the Israeli aerospace industry. As a child, together with his family, he escaped the Nazis, arriving in Israel in 1950. After his army service, Immanuel studied mechanical engineering at Technion, graduating cum laude. He then went on for graduate studies in France. After directing several successful engineering companies in Israel and abroad, Immanuel joined the Bedek Aviation Group of Israel Aerospace Industries, winning three Kaplan Prizes for outstanding economic achievement. Immanuel is chairman of the Israeli Mechanical Engineering Association and the CEO of Edmatech, an engineering consultation firm. He helped found the youth group Noar Le Noir and serves on the boards of a number of international organizations. His relationship with Technion came full circle when he returned as a lecturer in the Faculty of Aerospace Engineering and assisted in setting up several labs. At the recent Israeli conference on mechanical engineering held at Technion, he was honored for his outstanding contribution to the field. I think that the most important thing that I did is the education of a few generations of engineers and technicians. In my life, from the age of two up to almost 13, I was a refugee. And we, we traveled to many, many places to escape the Nazis. So when I came in Israel, I was almost uh, 13, I had a lot of difficulty to catch up in studies, so I understood what is the importance of education. And uh, I promised to myself that from the moment I will stand alone on my feet, I will devote a lot of time and energy to education. The Technion gave me the tools to analyze and to understand how the things really work. And so in my professional life, I never undertook anything without understanding deeply how to achieve the final goal and to be successful. In the high school, I met Edna, my love, and we married when I was in the second year in Technion. And for me, this honorary doctorate event is very, very important and exciting because uh, by chance, I started uh, the studies in Technion exactly 60 years ago. So it is a, a kind of a gift that I received and I am very thankful
I call upon Emmanuel Tzvi Liban to please rise. In recognition of your relentless efforts to, to promote the Israeli aviation industry and numerous innovative engineering solutions, in honor of your pioneering role in the field of jet and piston engine manufacturing, advancing Israel's economic well-being and security, and in gratitude for your involvement in educating new generations of mechanical engineers in the state of Israel. Would you please approach the presidium? And now I ask Professor Atia to, to join Professor Levy to present the scroll. Thank you very much. Martin Paul Moshal is an exceptional philanthropist, internet entrepreneur, venture capitalist, and inventor who has said, education is the most effective route out of poverty. Born and educated in South Africa, Martin witnessed firsthand how inequality in education affects society. He believes that study empowers young people to become leaders and role models, and that their success will change the lives of others along the way. Martin established the Moshal Scholarship Program, supporting financially challenged students in Israel and South Africa. Ilana and Martin Moshal are Technion guardians, and hundreds of promising students receive the financial support they need to succeed and realize their potential. The full scholarship covers all expenses, allowing students to focus their efforts solely on their studies. His only request is that they give back to the community by volunteering. A brilliant businessman and supporter of Israel, Martin has made a significant contribution to Israel by investing in numerous technology companies as well as the Sigma Labs Startup Accelerator. To encourage economic advancement in Israel's periphery, he invested in the Barlev High-Tech Park that will bring 5,000 badly needed high-tech jobs to the Western Galilee in northern Israel. I grew up in Durban in South Africa, that's on uh, the east coast of the country, and I was very fortunate in that it had a very strong, very Zionistic Jewish community. And I think it was the Jewish Day School and uh, the teachers around me and perhaps the community as well that really instilled a great um, importance in and appreciation of education. Despite growing up in the apartheid era, the school I went to, being a private school, was actually open to people of all colors and even though it was a Jewish Day School, people of all religions. The Michelle Scholarship Program started after I'd given much thought to what was the best way to give back to the community. And I think when it comes to giving money, the best returns one can get is probably in public health and education. And I've chosen education. So I started at the university level in trying to find individuals who if we did not fund them would not go to university. And the objective is, is that at the end of their university career, they will get a fantastic job which will hopefully change the trajectory of their life, preferably those of their nuclear family and hopefully of their community as well. The Technion probably gives one of the best returns to the Michelle Scholarship Program. The reality is, is that virtually every student that goes to the Technion is almost guaranteed a job. And we don't regard the return on what we get back, but it's what the student gets back over their lifetime and what we expect them to contribute to their wider community and to the country. When I got the call from Peretz Levy to tell me that the university was going to confer an honorary doctorate on me, I obviously felt very humbled, very gracious, and to be honest, a bit unworthy when I consider all the great individuals that have received honorary doctorates over the years. It's a fantastic institution, and I hope that I can live up to their great expectations.
Martin Paul Moshal. In recognition of your significant contributions to education and industry in Israel, in appreciation for your generosity, enabling disadvantaged students to attend the Technion through the Moshal Scholarship Program, thereby profoundly changing their lives and the lives of those in their communities, and for your friendship to the Technion. Would you please approach the Presidium? Professor Levy, Professor Atia, you have the honors. Thank you very much. Joe Neubauer's life mirrors the classic American success story, born in 1941 in Mandate, Palestine, to parents who fled the Holocaust. At 14, he traveled to the USA alone for schooling, continuing to receive a bachelor's degree from Tufts University and an MBA from the University of Chicago. He joined Aramark in 1979 one of the world's largest food and support services firms, rising to CEO and chairman, and growing the company from $2.5 to $13 billion in annual revenue. Joe believes that one of the keys to success is to instill the entrepreneurial spirit in his employees. Joe has been honored for his numerous civic and professional achievements. Just some of them are a conferment of knight in the Order of St. Gregory the Great from the Pope, election to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and to the American Philosophical Society, receiving the Woodrow Wilson Award for Corporate Citizenship, and being inducted into the Horatio Alger Association of Distinguished Americans. His generosity and philosophy of helping people to help themselves is legendary. Joe and his wife, Jeanette Lehrman Neubauer, are Technion Guardians, supporting projects to encourage student exchange and faculty and PhD recruitment including the Neubauer Family Foundation Fund for the Recruitment of Minority Faculty Members, the Neubauer American Study Abroad Program, and the Neubauer Doctoral Fellowship Fund for Minority Students. The Neubauer Family Foundation, which my wife and I created and continues to be very, very involved in, believes in investing in human capital and investing in projects that are unique, that reach a lot of people, that create change, that are scalable and sustainable, and you can measure the results of the efforts that you put in. We also want to make people aware of the opportunities that are available to them, because we believe that in giving people hope to achieve higher life trajectories they can do on their own. And that's what really attracted us to the Technion, and that's what we're looking forward to continue to do with the Technion. We want to bring knowledge to American students of Israel. And our idea was to bring American students during their junior year abroad to Israel to live with Israelis, not with other Jewish foreign students, to learn what Israel is all about and to come back to campus and discuss with their friends and colleagues what their experiences in Israel were. And as we start talking about that, it became clear that we want to also bring more minorities into the mainstream in Israel, as well as we have done here in the United States. I really want to thank the Technion and the leadership of the Technion very much for honoring me with this great honor and the great opportunity to work with them. And I wish you all the best of success and great future as you continue to lead Israel and the world in technology, in innovation, and in creativity. Joseph Neubauer, in tribute to your professional accomplishments in the business world and as the head of a Fortune 100 company, in appreciation for your contribution to many American and Israeli not-for-profit organizations and your belief in the importance of giving back, in recognition of your being a catalyst for excellence 
and diversity amongst our students and faculty, and in gratitude for your generous support of the Technion and Israel. Would you please approach the podium? And I now ask Professor Givoli to join the president to present the scroll. Born in Venezuela, Professor Rafael Reif is the 17th president of Massachusetts Institute of Technology and a man of vision. A distinguished academic who served previously as MIT's provost, he fostered the important cooperation between MIT and Israeli universities. As president, he is a steadfast supporter of Israeli academia on the global stage. In 2012, he chaired the International Review Committee for the Technion Viterbi Faculty of Electrical Engineering and was instrumental in establishing the MIT Technion Postdoctoral Fellowships Program, a collaboration that benefits both institutes. Rafael is a champion of investment in basic science while pursuing MIT's signature program to promote innovation and entrepreneurship. Pioneering the future of higher education, Rafael is a leader in the development of MIT's online learning programs that are an educational triumph. In March 2017, the MIT Open Online Learning Platform edX had more than 11 million unique learners. He has 13 patents and has edited or co-edited five books. Rafael is an elected member of the National Academy of Engineering and the American Academy of Arts and Science. Technion and MIT are very unique institutions and they are very similar in many ways. They are both focused on science and technology. They are both trying to advance the state of the art in science and technology. They both are trying to use technology to do great things. So they're pretty much kindred spirits. And I think the more we can do together, the more we can benefit from each other, the more we help make the world a better place. So I think this is something that I've been always looking forward to and trying to expand which is more interaction between the Technion and MIT. I am humbled and honored and extremely excited by receiving an honorary degree from the Technion. Growing up in my home country in Venezuela, I always admired institutions like the Technion and MIT. I saw them as very unique places in which the very best of the best want to go and advance uh, science and technology to advance humanity. So I have admired those institutions for so long. And I'm now in a very unique position of having the tremendous privilege of running one of those institutions, which is to me a huge honor in itself. And, and now I have the opportunity to receive an honorary degree from the other institution that I have admired. I don't think I can dream for bigger accomplishment in life right now for me. So it means a great deal to me to be honored in this way by the Technion. Professor Rafael Reif, with appreciation for your outstanding leadership, pioneering work in 3D integrated circuits, vision for education in the digital age, and cultivation of relations between MIT and Israeli universities, and in gratitude for your instrumental contributions to the Technion's academic advancement, would you please approach? Professor Levy, Professor Givoli, would you please confer the scroll? Thank you. Professor Reif, the podium is now yours for your response on behalf of the laureates. Erev Tov, Echubadai. Ha 
הייתי רוצה לשאת את דבריי בעברית. שפה שאותה למדתי בבית הספר עם חבר שלי בוריס, הולדתי ונסואלה. ואולם, לצערי, השפה העברית כבר איננה שגורה בפי. אפילו היידיש, שאותה דיברנו בבית, כבר לא מה שהייתה פעם. אז נסתפק היום באנגלית. שאשתי אומרת שגם בה יש לי מקום לשיפור. פרסידן לוי, צ'רמן ג'קיר, members of the board of governors and technion colleagues, thank you for this incredibly delightful recognition. I'm truly humbled to be standing before you all this evening. I also want to acknowledge the exceptional talents and contributions of my fellow degree recipients, Bernard and Joseph and David and Odile, Emmanuel, Martin and Joe. It is a truly special honor to be recognized alongside all of you. And it's an immense privilege to say a few words on behalf of such a distinguished group. Tonight's recognition holds a special meaning to me. In the 37 years since I first set foot on MIT's campus, I have taken only one sabbatical almost 30 years ago in 1988. I had a choice and I chose the Technion. I wanted to conduct research at an institution I admire and with colleagues I deeply respect. But my decision to travel to Israel then was also influenced by a much deeper a more personal reason. My story is not much different from that of many of yours. I come from a family of refugees. In 1938, my mother and father fled Eastern Europe for the American continent in search of safety and hoping for security and opportunity. My extended family on my father's side stayed behind in their small town near the border between what are now Ukraine and Moldavia. Bukovina, I understand, you understand. A few months after my parents left, all those who remain, all 52 of them, were evacuated and eventually sent to concentration camps. Within a few years, all but one was dead. Some died of hunger, some of typhus, and some were killed by the Nazis. The one who survived was a cousin of mine, a teenager then named Penina. Somehow she managed to escape, and she found her way to what is now the State of Israel in 1945. I'm delighted that Penina's daughters, Hannah and Tzviah, as well as Hannah's son, Ori, and Tzuya's son, Nitzan, have made this trip to campus and are here with us this evening. And I'm grateful for that. <laughs> when my parents arrived in South America, first in Ecuador and then Venezuela, they had nothing. They didn't speak the language, they were very poor, and they knew no one. But what they could not give my brothers and me in material possessions, they provided in principles and values. And they instilled in us a deep appreciation for the value of learning. I remember my father telling me, when you have to live in a hurry, 
Education is all you can take with you. I have carried that lesson with me throughout my life. And like so many of you, I have made education my life's work. In effect, my father was saying that as an individual, if you have an education, you have the possibility of inventing your own future. I have come to see that this is also true on a grander scale. As a society and as a nation, if you have great institutions, great universities, you can invent your own future too. And that is the theme I want to explore with you tonight. In the United States and in many nations around the world, now is a moment of change. As we navigate uncertainty around the globe, it is useful to remind ourselves and the world that universities can be a powerful, steady force for good. In fact, I believe that this moment offers a remarkable opportunity for research universities to be leaders, leaders in education, leaders in research, and in particular, leaders in solving problems to make a better world. In other words, in other words, we need to be leaders in the kind of innovation that matters most. Let me illustrate by telling you about Joel Fink. Joel is an MIT professor of material science, a former director of MIT's research lab of electronics, and a proud alum of the Technion class of 1995 in physics and chemical engineering. Joel's research is grounded in basic science. He came to MIT as a graduate student to study how light interacts with various materials. He received a great deal of attention for a discovery he called the perfect mirror. But the application was not immediately clear. As he joined the MIT faculty, his interest in a highly reflective mirror evolved into an interest in highly reflective fibers. He could have built a whole career just advancing the science. But MIT culture challenges all of us to pursue innovation to do good for society. In this context, Joel was inspired to develop a fiber-based medical device that has been used in nearly a quarter of a million procedures to treat everything from cancer to hearing loss. The experience also opened his eyes to the wide-ranging application of fibers and textiles. Joel is a case study in the magic that happens when great science and great ingenuity come together to produce groundbreaking new ideas, the kind of innovation that matters most. Joel describes his recent work as the start of a fabric revolution, and the possibilities are enormous. Imagine a military doctor who could, who could gather critical information from the uniform of a soldier injured in battle, or medical devices that can detect health emergencies before they happen, or a jacket that may, may neutralize chemical or biological substances in the atmosphere. Not surprisingly, Joel's research and vision have caught the attention of the US Department of Defense. And he was selected to run a more than $300 million partnership called the Institute for Advanced Functional Fabrics of America, or AFOA for short, which will op actually open this coming week. Joel's dream is to enable a manufacturing revolution by transforming traditional fibers, yarns, and fabrics into highly sophisticated, integrated, and network devices and systems. Through a company he launched, UL fibers are already reaching the marketplace directly. And with a FOA, the sky is the limit. But innovations that have the potential to change the world are not always so fortunate. I've heard this over and over from MIT faculty and alumni entrepreneurs. They are working on big global 
problems, the freshwater crisis, sustainable energy, infectious disease, Alzheimer's, climate change. But too often, they find that important ideas get stuck in the lab because the process of transforming new science into marketable products takes longer than most risk capital is willing to wait. This presents an opportunity for universities to lead. If we are to deliver serious technological solutions to urgent global challenges, we must ensure that the innovators working to address those challenges see a realistic pathway for their inventions to reach society. Like the Technion and many other institutions, MIT has built a network of resources to help innovators move their ideas from the lab to the market. I briefly want to describe a unique effort we launched last October, intentionally focused on supporting those working on tough technology solutions to big societal problems. It's called the engine. The engine is an accelerator specially geared to serve new ventures based on cutting edge science and technology. It offers a distinctive package of resources, patient capital, affordable local space, access to highly specialized equipment, streamlined legal and business services, and expertise from prototype to scale up. What truly sets it apart is an emphasis on impact. In assessing candidate companies, it will prioritize breakthrough answers to big problems over early profit. We believe the engine will help deliver the kind of innovation that matters most. Innovation that will hopefully produce not only new companies, but new industries, new forms of manufacturing, and new jobs. I hope these stories will leave you with two thoughts. First, I hope you will agree that through research from the most basic to the most applied, universities can shape the future by finding solutions to humanity's great challenges. And second, I hope you will agree that the universities that will shape the future in service to society must not only educate innovators, they must be willing to innovate boldly themselves. To be recognized by an institution as dedicated to innovation as a Technion, alongside peers who believe as deeply as I do in the power of education, and in front of family, friends, and colleagues, and in Eretz Israel, is an extraordinary and unbelievable honor, and I will never forget it. Thank you so very much. Thank you very, very much. I again wish to express our deepest appreciation to all the honorees and to all the Technion's friends who have come from all over the world to demonstrate their solidarity with the Technion and with Israel. With this, I'd like to ask the audience to please rise for Hatikva. Yeah.